Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about how our planet Earth was made completely from scratch. We're going to go through the entire evolution of our planet and we'll also talk about what and how it all started. Welcome to What The Math. And it all started something like 4.6 billion years ago when a star, a very very large star whose name we don't really have uh, and we don't really know, uh, decided to go supernova. And this supernova essentially created a very very large boom in, uh, in the region which would later serve as uh, the region of forming new stars. So here we go, we're going to start with a boom. And the supernova is going to basically spread everywhere. And as it spreads, uh, all of this material starts kind of coming closer together, starts clumping together. And uh, this will eventually produce new uh, smaller stars from all of this material that you, you see spreading in front of you. So essentially, all of it started with a big boom. Now, all of this material, as it cools down, as it clumps together, starts producing uh, these new protostars. Basically, uh, bodily formations that will then um, end up being stars or end up being gas giants or end up being brown dwarfs. Now we don't really know when exactly this took place and where exactly it took place but we just know that it did happen and that uh, many other stars were created in sort of in a similar fashion around the same time in the same vicinity but over time they all kind of uh, spread apart from our from our star from um, from the sun and basically are somewhere out there as well. So there's actually other stars that are made from the same sort of uh, material that was present in this protostar that are flying somewhere else in our galaxy. And anyway, so this uh, supernova is about to cool down and disappear. And there you go. So now all of this material is going to start clumping until somewhere in the center, a very, very large body starts forming and essentially uh, becomes what I called here a baby sun. So around it, you'll have these... Uh, massive amount of material still kind of orbiting and sort of creating this kind of a torus shape which will eventually uh, flatten out and become more cylindrical and um, but for now though in the middle we have this relatively large um, gas giant like body that is essentially our baby sun but at some point this baby sun will acquire just enough mass to become an actual star and this is when the real formation of the solar system begins. And let's actually do this manually. We're going to increase its mass until it actually becomes a star. There you go. Baby sun nova remnant. That shouldn't be actually called that, but we'll call it just early sun. So as soon as it actually uh, becomes a star, as soon as it star starts producing energy using essentially what what we would call a nuclear reaction. Basically, as soon as it turns into a nuclear powered reactor, a lot of the material that was a little bit closer and a little bit lighter will actually get blown out into the outer solar system. And uh, most of the uh, material that's heavier and more massive, so for example, things like lead, iron, and so on, they wanna really fly as far and they'll actually stay in the inner solar system and will then be responsible for essentially creating the uh, so-called rocky planets also known as uh, Mercury, Venus, Mars and, and Earth. Whereas lighter materials will actually fly out into the uh, outer solar system and create the ice giants and the gas giants. So this was essentially the beginning of our solar system and now we're going to create our baby Earth. Now as a lot of this material actually just kind of flies around and orbits around the early sun, it basically starts colliding with each other and creates bigger and bigger chunks. And this is how baby Earth was born. This was essentially a relatively large asteroid that was possibly slightly larger than everything else in the region. And this way it was actually able to survive and to um, not only to survive collisions with other asteroids, but to also attract even more asteroids toward it until eventually it started becoming something that we know today as a, a protoplanet or a, you, I guess you could call it a dwarf planet. So within a few million years, uh, this baby Earth started to acquire quite a lot of new mass, started to grow in size and basically started to become larger and larger as more and more material basically coalesced on the surface uh, of, of this uh, relatively large asteroid that's currently at radius of about, I think it's about five kilometers. It's going to increase in size because I just added a lot of material and it's going to grow right in front of your eyes. So all of this started happening relatively quick because there was a lot of material flying around. And as other uh, chunks started to get larger and larger, they also started to collide with baby Earth. And uh, most of the collision baby Earth survived because it was probably the largest rock in this region. And all of this essentially happened over a period of several thousand years. 
And so here's, for example, our first gas that's going to essentially collide with baby Earth and give it a little bit more mass. We kind of missed the collision, but it is right here. And this, of course, was happening quite a lot. I would even say that every year our baby Earth received quite a lot of these mi miniature um, small collisions that would then increase its mass even further, even though it kind of reshuffled it and broke it apart and then recreated it, um, it in a completely new shape. But essentially, this was a very common occurrence early on. This was about 4.5 billion years ago, and all of this was happening relatively fast. At the same time, this also gave our uh, mini Earth a little bit of a spin and also uh, started to change its orientation a little bit. And uh, eventually, with time, due to collisions, due to interaction with other objects, our Earth achieved the kind of a rotation and a kind of um, orientation that it has right now. And this is actually one of the reasons we even have seasons today. It's because it received some of the collisions in the past that changed, it, or changed uh, the orientation that it originally has. And so anyway, so we're going to increase its size until it turns into basically a dwarf planet. And this is when um, an object basically achieves something called um, hydrostatic equilibrium. It, it becomes massive enough that it can actually maintain a spherical or relatively spherical shape. And this is what we would call uh, a protoplanet or a dwarf planet. And um, it would it eventually lead to, or I guess uh, objects like this would eventually lead to formation of other um, planets in our system and also other moons as well. But we don't really care about other planets right now. We only care about our, our beautiful Earth. Now, as it essentially formed, as it sort of... Um, acquired its shape, it obviously, because it was more massive now, because it essentially increased in size, increased in mass, started to attract a lot more material from uh, from its vicinity. So a lot of these asteroids that you see orbiting, or kind of see, I guess it's kind of hard to see. Uh, let me just change this a little bit. And I think I kind of made it a little bit more visible. So all of this material that you kind of see in this ring that orbits in the same region um, as our baby Earth eventually basically uh, decided to collide with our planet and all of it was essentially absorbed by our early planet and gave our planet quite a lot of new mass, making it even bigger. And that's of course because as the planet grew in size and in mass, it essentially acquired even more gravity and became even more massive. So a lot of these rocks will now start colliding with it because it is essentially attracting them because it's a much more massive um, object in, in the vicinity, in the region. And as a matter of fact, this was very likely the biggest uh, terrestrial object, terrestrial looking object in the region because we know today that Earth is actually uh, the most massive terrestrial planet that we have in our solar system. And obviously with all of these collisions, uh, the Earth, the BB Earth warmed up, became very, very, very hot, uh, was almost constantly sort of molten and liquid looking or I guess soft looking because uh, a lot of the material that essentially fell to the surface uh, and would create um, this superheated material would eventually start kind of circulating inside because it was now technically a liquid um, and it, as it sort of circulated as it uh, moved around on the inside the heavier materials like iron and lead and uh, any kind of heavy metal would actually fall to the bottom creating the core and the lighter stuff like silicates, rocks and even lighter stuff like water would actually stay on the surface and uh, eventually settle there. Now, so this obviously um, happened relatively fast, but not too fast. Uh, uh, this would probably take a, a few million years for it to kind of start forming to the point where it was already large enough to be called um, essentially a planet. And of course, by today's definition, this means that it had to be in hydrostatic equilibrium. It had to orbit the, uh, the sun. And there you go, baby Earth. This is our beautiful planet, as it probably looked earlier on in the um, formation of the solar system. So, um, and on top of that, they also had to basically get rid of everything else in its orbital path. So all of the asteroids, all of the other material had to be kind of be, uh, be gone. And so it had to be the only major object um, in the vicinity, which of course to us means even more collisions, even more fun collisions in Universe Sandbox 2. And so essentially, as it started happening and as it continued to happen, um, more and more material arrived to our planet. It uh, sort of sorted itself out by weight. And uh, eventually, the planet started to get, get big enough that it, uh, a single collision would no longer affect it and melt it. And as a matter of fact, it started to cool down, not warm up. So as it grew to the size uh, that's a bit closer to the actual size of Earth, 
And as it grew bigger and bigger and bigger, and we're going to actually make it almost Earth uh, size, just a little bit less than that for a reason I'll explain in a second. Uh, so there we go. And um, as it essentially grew to the size that um, that we know today, um, it was large enough and its surface area was large enough that it actually started to cool down and uh, eventually stopped being so superheated and super molten and acquired a solid surface that you'll see in a second as soon as I decrease the temperature low enough. And uh, so all of this basically um, happened within about a few million years. It wasn't really taking it billions of years to get that far. Uh, but there you go. You can see it solidify and become the Earth. Uh, almost the Earth that we know today, but not really. Uh, so on the surface here, you had a lot of rock. On the inside, you had um, iron and uh, molten, uh, molten rock, molten silicates. And then there's also obviously some water on the surface, a lot of other materials that were slightly lighter and didn't really get to um, sink to the bottom. But uh, as it solidified, as it actually became mo uh, more hard, all of the new material that arrived here would actually not uh, get mixed in with the other stuff on the inside. It would actually stay on the surface. So one of the reasons that we actually have so many different heavy metals, um, like for example, uranium, plutonium, so many other things uh, that should technically be on, on the inside of Earth. One of the reasons we have uh, all of that on the surface, even things like gold, for example, gold and platinum, they are heavy enough to actually sink to the bottom. But the reason why they are on the surface is because they actually arrived after the formation of Earth was finished and they fell to the surface and they stayed on the surface. But here's the thing, this is actually not over yet. Uh, sometime after the formation of this object, and this was uh, maybe about 30 to 35 million years after uh, the beginning of the solar system, essentially when the sun became uh, the way it is today, uh, so about 35 million years after this, there was an object, a very large object, possibly the size of Mars, that decided to actually uh, collide with our planet Earth. And this object, uh, today we refer to it as Theia, uh, essentially did this. It collided with our planet in such a way that it created a kind of a spin, but at the same time, a lot of the uh, material on the surface uh, because of the spin actually got thrown out into um, the outer Earth system, as I would call it, I guess. So it didn't really uh, get absorbed uh, in such a way that you saw just now. But it, it, essentially what it did is, uh, as the Earth started spinning more and more, the outer layer, which unfortunately I can't really demonstrate in this game, but the outer layer got thrown out and started orbiting around the baby Earth. And so there is that material orbiting around the baby Earth that was basically thrown out from the surface of our planet. And as you can imagine, or as you can possibly predict, all of this started to coalesce as well, and then created the object that I'm now going to refer to as the baby moon. So this was essentially the formation of the moon and the final, final formation of Earth. Now this uh, all happened uh, relatively fast as well, so we're talking just millions of years, not billions of years. And within the next uh, 5 to 10 millions of years, both of these objects were essentially already solidified and uh, had relatively smooth and beautiful looking surface, which would then be completely destroyed by future collisions, as we know from the moon's surface that we can see today. Even though originally this uh, object was very, very smooth, it basically then received so many collisions that it turned into Swiss cheese. It had a lot of different craters that were basically formed by various other collisions. Now, um, over the next few millions of years, uh, our planet Earth received quite a lot of collisions. There was actually something called late heavy bombardment that actually happened something like 700 million years after the formation of Earth. And uh, very likely, this is actually when a lot of the water arrived to, to our planet Earth. Uh, because for now, if I actually cool it down, let's just make it about 100 degrees Celsius. Um, right now, it's just kind of a barren, empty land. There's really nothing on it. Uh, but so within the next 700 million years, our beautiful planets started to receive even more collisions, even more asteroids that would then bring, um, like I mentioned before, precious metals various materials that we actually mine today, and of course, brought quite a lot of different water. And so all of these collisions that you're about to see happened um, within a few million years, but there were quite a lot of them. And, and the moon actually is a, is a good indicator of how many collisions there were, uh, if not more than, uh, than what you can see on the moon. Um, I believe moon and Mercury have some of the oldest surfaces in our solar system. And on Mercury alone, there's like over 5,000 different uh, very well-known craters so essentially, you can kind of imagine there were 
thousands, thousands of different collisions with a lot of different asteroids of different size that will then eventually bring liquid water to our planet. And I'm going to cheat a little bit and use a slightly larger object that has a lot of water. And essentially, within the next few million years, we'll start acquiring liquid ocean on the surface of our planet. Um, so obviously the planet didn't really look that way and also uh, we know that uh, back then there was only like one continent, one major continent, uh, before the plate tectonics took over and started to produce other continents, uh, but uh, in the beginning Earth really didn't have the same face as it does today. But this was essentially almost the end of formation of Earth, so as the Earth cooled down and as the uh, water that used to be in gas form started to cool down as well, uh, it produced liquid water that you can kind of see on the surface now. It also um, eventually uh, started to acquire other uh, elements uh, that would eventually create the atmosphere, which I suddenly <laughs> made appear magically. And of course, during all of this time, our Earth also had very, very strong magnetic field, which kind of protected this atmosphere from uh, disintegrating and from disappearing. And so there is our magnetic field as well. And eventually, because of all the collisions, because of all of the interaction with other objects in the solar system, our Earth started to also receive all kinds of organics and organic materials, which eventually, of course, led to the beginning of life, something about 3.5 billion years ago. And so essentially, this is how baby Earth, and I guess you can and kind of rename this into just Earth now, and of course its companion moon were born and how they essentially were formed from the initial supernova that happened possibly something like 5 billion years ago to present and essentially this is how our beautiful home was born. And that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, I wanted to kind of show you visually how all of this happened using Universe Sandbox 2. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, you can always subscribe and share this video and possibly like this video and maybe even check out some of the other videos where I've talked about this in more detail. There's actually a video that explains Theia theory in more detail. There's also another video where I actually showed you how Earth can be formed by colliding various protoplanets and planetesimals together. And I've also showed you the evolution of our solar system as well. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll talk about something else, science, math, or space related, and possibly even play a video game. And as always, game you later, guys. Thank you for all your support. Bye-bye.